The Good Huswife's Jewel is an English cookery book by the cookery and housekeeping writer Thomas Dawson, first published in 1585. It includes recipes for medicines as well as food. To the spices found in medieval English cooking, the book adds herbs, especially parsley and thyme. Sugar is used in many of the dishes, along with now unfamiliar ingredients like violets and rosewater. The book includes recipes still current, such as pancakes, haggis, and salad of leaves and flowers with vinaigrette sauce, as well as some not often made, such as mortis, a sweet chicken pate. Some dishes have familiar names, such as trifle, but different ingredients from those used today. The Jewel is the first English cookery book to give a recipe for sweet potatoes. Context The Elizabethan age represented the period of transition from medieval to modern. Cookery was changing as trade brought new ingredients, and fashion favored new styles of cooking, with, for example, locally grown herbs as well as imported spices. Cooking came to be seen as a subject in its own right, rather than being part of medicine or books of secrets. Little is known of the book's author, Thomas Dawson, beyond the bare fact that he published several books on cooking including also his 1620 book of cookery. Such books were becoming available to a wider audience than the aristocratic households of the Middle Ages, hence the Huswife of Dawson's title. Book Overview The Good Huswife's Jewel gives recipes for making fruit tarts using fruits as varied as apple, peach, cherry, damson, pear, and mulberry. For stuffing for meat and poultry, or as Dawson says, to farce all things, he recommends using the herbs thyme, hyssop, and parsley, mixed with egg yolk, white bread, raisins or barberries, and spices including cloves, mace, cinnamon and ginger, all in the same dish. A sauce for pork was made with white wine, broth, nutmeg, and the herbs rosemary, bay, thyme, and marjoram. Familiar recipes include pancakes, which were made with cream, egg yolks, flour, and a little ale. The cook was directed. Let the fire be very soft, and when the one side is baked, then turn the other, and bake them as dry as ye can without burning. Blamange appears as Blumanger, made of cream, eggs, sugar, and rosewater. Approach The recipes are written as goals, like to make a tart of spinach, with instructions to achieve the goal. Quantities are given, if at all, only in passing, either with vague phrases like a good handful of parsley and a few sweet herbs, or as the yolks of four hard eggs. Cooking times are given only occasionally, as let them see the quantity of an oar. Directions as to the fire are given where necessary, as boil it in a chafing dish of coals, or with a fire of wood beate at the space of two oars. The recipe for a salad with a vinaigrette dressing runs as follows from the 1596 edition. To make a salad of all kinde of herbes take your herbs and pick them very fine into fair water, and pick your flowers by them cellus, and washy them al clean, and swing them in a strainer, and when you put them into a dish, mingle them with cowcumbers or lemons pared and sliced, and scraped sugar, and put in vinegar and oil, and throw the flowers on the top of the salad, and of every sort of the aforesaid things and garnish the dish about with the aforesaid things, and hard egg is boiled and laid about the dish and upon the salad. This recipe is taken up by the National Trust, which calls it Stourhead Herb and Flower Salad. Contents The 1596 edition is structured as follows Order of meat how they must be served at the table, with their sauces for flesh days at dinner. A book of cookery 39 double pages a prod points of cookery, a prod points of husbandry, a prod medicines for sundry diseases. The table of the book following gathered according to Yuri Folio throughout the whole book index, part 2, 1597. The 1597 edition of part 2 is structured as follows. A book of cookery, 72 single pages. The book of carewing and sewing, 38 single pages, not numbered. Tiermes of a Karur 
The Book of Karuing How to Make March Pen and Ipocras Illustrations The book is illustrated only with a frontispiece. In the 1610 edition this has six kitchen scenes, including a three-legged pot over an open fire, cordials being distilled, a bread oven, and pots and roasts on a spit over a fire. Medicines Dawson's recipes included medicines, some of which involved sympathetic magic. The Good Huswife's Jewel described a tart to provoke courage in either man or woman. Calling for the brains of male sparrows. Torn sinews are healed by taking worms while they be nice. Crushing them and laying them onto the sore. And it will knit the sinew that be broken in two. Editions First edition, Edward White, 1585 Second edition, Edward White, 1596, reprinted 1996, Southover Press, with introduction by Maggie Black. Third edition, Edward White, 1610A book called The Second Part of the Good Hus Wiues Jewel was published by Edward White in 1597. Reception the celebrity chef Clarissa Dixon Wright comments on Dawson's trifle that it differs from the modern recipe, as it consists only of a pinte of thick cream, seasoned with sugar, ginger and rose water, and warmed gently for serving. She notes, also from the good huswife's jewel, that the Elizabethans had a strong liking for sweet things, richly demonstrated, in Dawson's names of all things necessary for a banquet. Sugar, cinnamon, licorice, pepper, nutmegs, all kinds of saffron, sanders, comfits, aniseeds, coriander, oranges, pomegranate seeds, damask water, turnsole, lemons, prunes, rose water, dates, currants, raisins, cherries conserved, barberries conserved, rye flour, ginger, sweet oranges, pepper white and brown, mace, wafers. The culinary historian Allison Sim notes that the closest the Tudors came to sponge were sponge-like biscuits, which could be raised with eggs or with yeast. The cracknells in the jewel were boiled before baking, being put into boiling water where they would sink and then rise to the top. Sim notes that Dawson's fine biscuit bread had to be beaten for two hours. The culinary historian Ken Albala describes the jewel as an important cookbook and observes that it is the first English cookery book to give a recipe for sweet potatoes which had arrived in Europe after Columbus's S voyages, while also listing old medieval standbys. He comments that there are several pudding recipes, both savory and sweet, including haggis. He notes, too, that it gives instructions for the marzipan figures. So beloved on the Elizabethan banqueting table. The culinary historian Stephen Menel calls the jewel more distinctively English than the Boke of Curvinge and the Boke of Cokery from earlier in the century. It, like Gervis Markham's The English Huswife of 1615, was aimed at a more general audience, not only aristocrats but housewives, which Menel glosses as gentlewomen concerned with the practical tasks of running households. Hence the book could treat not only food but medicines, dairy work, brewing, and preserving. The historian Joanna Opasker notes that the Elizabethans used what may seem odd ingredients today, such as rose water and violets, and that Dawson provides a recipe for salmon with violets, the recipe calling for slices of onion with violets, oil, and vinegar. She also notes that sugar was included in almost every kind of dish, as well as spices that we would use in sweet rather than savory dishes. Notes References Page references to Dawson are from the 1596 edition. Each folio or double page spread has a single number, so there are twice as many actual sides as numbers. External links Goad Cookery PDFs including The Good Huswife's Jewel 1596 and the second part of The Good Hus Wiues Jewel 1597 Good Huswife's Jewel 1596
TXT